everyone, this is Nian. Today I'll be painting this simple sunset scenery. I haven't done landscape paintings for a while, so I decided to go easy on this one. And let's begin this painting by masking the sides. I'm just using ordinary masking tape. You can also use washi tape or painter's tape for this. Once the masking tapes are secured, I'm going to begin sketching it out. Here's the reference image that I used on the bottom right corner of the frame. And basically what I'm trying to do is just to place the main elements really roughly with pencil. And this will serve as my guide so I know where to stop painting certain colors. I'm also simplifying the composition. You can see that there's a lot of things going on in the background. And I'm just going to blur it out as I paint later. So I just want to indicate the position. For the trees, I just want to do a rough silhouette of the shapes. As for the sun, I want it to be equal in distance apart from the trees on the right and left. And I want to make sure that the reflection is aligned to the sun. Next, here are the colors I'll be using. This is Hansi Yellow Light by Daniel Smith. New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. Jean Brilliant No. 2 by Holbein. Vermilion by Holbein. Crimson Lake by Holbein, Indigo by Schminke, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Let's begin by painting the sky. I'm going to begin by dampening the surface of the sky completely. This means over the trees and the bushes except for the sun because I want the sun to be the brightest area so I will leave it white. I want an even distribution but I don't want the surface to be puddling wet. I'm going to paint around the sun first. For this, I use a mix of Hansi Yellow Light with New Gamboge, and I'm just painting the glow of the sun. And as you can see, because the surface is slightly damp, the color is just going to blur out around the edges. While the surface is still damp, I'm going to add a thicker consistency of New Gamboge to make the color a little bit stronger, and I'm going to extend it outwards. I'm working fairly quickly here because I don't want any areas to dry out. To paint the rest of the sky, I switched to my large brush so I can cover more area. And I started out at the top with a mix of New Gamboge and Jean Brilliant. As I move downwards, I want to darken the color so I would add Vermilion and paint it a little bit more than one third of the way down. Meanwhile, I want each color to blend nicely into each other, but I don't want to paint over the top of the glow of the sun that we painted earlier. The next color that I'm going to make is a mix of Crimson Lake with Vermilion, but before I paint it on, I want to extend the orange color downward so it can blend a little bit nicer with the red. I'm only going to paint one line using this red and I'm going to chase it up with a dark purple color from a mix of Crimson Lake with Indigo. If you want more of a subtle muted tone more similar to the reference image, I wouldn't mix it with the Crimson Lake, I would just use Indigo from the orange color. This is because I want to increase the vibrancy which is why I decided to mix it with the Crimson Lake to create more of a warm purple color instead of the dark indigo. After I've placed all the colors, I want to make sure that everything has a nice blend for the sky. For the size of the sky, I'm creating a slight vignette effect. So I mixed in a little bit of the purple with a touch of Jean Brilliant and I'm painting it around the top left and right corners and meanwhile because I feel like the top section is drying out a little bit and the color is getting a little bit lighter I'm just going to go over it again to increase the vibrancy. While the surface is still damp I'm going to paint on the bushes so it's going to be blurry in the background. For the color I use indigo as the main color and I added a little bit of crimson lake and vermilion which is already on my palette and here you'll see me using my synthetic brush so I can get a thicker consistency of color and I'm just dotting it with the tip of my brush and letting the paint bloom out naturally. Here I'm just cleaning out the edge of the sun and I also want to add 
uneven edges for the bush background. If parts of the indigo bled out into the sky, I would take off the excess paint using a clean dry brush. Then once I'm happy with the placing of the colors, I just want to make sure everything's completely dry by using a hair dryer to make the process quicker. Once everything is completely dry, I'm going to work on the water area. I'm going to use the same wet on wet technique which is to just dampen the whole surface but because the reflection and the sun is going to be the lightest area, I'm going to avoid wetting that part just like I did with the sun. Once I have an even damp surface, I'm going to start out by coloring the outer part of the reflection. I first use a mix of New Gamboge with Hansi Yellow Light and I just want to define the shape of the reflections for now. Once I'm done, I'm going to follow it up by just using new gamboge in a slightly thicker consistency. I'm just painting on lines using this color on the yellow area, but I'm not painting around the individual shapes. Next here, I'm using vermilion and I'm painting it on the top portion of the reflection and also extending it outwards. On the side here, I'm going to add a mix of Crimson Lake Vermilion and Jean Brilliant and I want to connect those colors together. I know I haven't finished the top portion but I just want to move on to the bottom part because I've left it for a while now. So I just want to do the same thing for the sun. I started out from a mix of Hansa Yellow Light with New Gamboge but since I have a good amount of the yellow already, I'm going to add vermilion mix with New Gamboge as a brighter orange and I'm going to extend this downwards, the yellow and also the vermilion because I want that part to be a bit lighter so it becomes a nice base for the sparkly highlights later on. For the rest of the water, I'm going to try to copy the color of the sky, but in the opposite direction, so the top of the sky becomes the bottom of the water. Right at the very bottom, I used a mix of New Gamboge with Jean Brilliant, and for the second color, I used the same mix with added Vermilion. The very top though, I want to change the color slightly. I'm using a muted purple, so this is from the same purple mix before, with added Vermilion and Jean Brilliant. And just like the sky, I'm going to create a vignette, so I use the same mix for the bottom left and right corner. Still using the same mix but with added Shun Brilliant, I'm going to separate the reflections with this color and I want the reflection at the top to be thinner and as it gets to the bottom, the lines will become slightly thicker. I decided to add more Jean Brilliant with Vermilion just to make the color a little bit brighter and I'm going to apply this to the reflections to define the shapes further and just like before I'm painting on lines but because the surface is less dry the color is not going to spread out as much. There is a fair amount of color here already so I'm just going to leave it for now and let it dry and meanwhile I'm going to move on to paint some vegetation still for the background. For this I used a mix of Crimson Lake with Indigo and I'm just dotting with the tip of my brush to create uneven edges and I also try to play around with the height. I'm not going to fill in the color completely but I'm going to just pull the rest of the paint downward so the bottom is slightly lighter than the top. After that, I want to make sure everything's completely dry because I want to work on the second layer for the water. I started out by using a muted red mix for the top. For this, I use a mix of Vermilion, John Brilliant, Crimson Lake, and Indigo. And I'm just painting it on the sides, making sure that the side is slightly darker to increase the vibrancy and the brightness of the sun reflection. As I move downwards, I want to use the exact same color mixtures as the base color and this is just to increase the vibrancy. While the surface is still slightly damp, I'm going to move back to the same you to red mix and I'm just going to paint on lines on the left and right corner from the top 
to the bottom and because the surface is not completely wet and the paint won't travel too fast, you can see a slight water texture from those lines. I'm quite happy with the saturation here so I'm just going to dry it off completely and move on to paint the foreground. To paint the foreground, I'm using my synthetic brush and I'm using a very thick consistency of indigo with crimson lake. As you can see, the color is almost black. I first painted on the base and now I'm going to switch to my liner brush and paint on the texture of the vegetation using the same color. I'm putting a lot of pressure for the area underneath because I want it to almost be a full silhouette and I flick my brush upwards to create those finer lines. I'm going to do more or less the same thing for the land on the top right side on the water but instead of making a grassy texture this time I want to create a rocky type of silhouette. As you can see the position of the land is slightly different to the reference but I just feel like this zigzag composition will be a nice way to direct our eyes to the sun and the reflections. I added more Crimson Lake into the same mix and I'm using a slightly thinner consistency now to paint on the tree trunk and branches. Before I finish off the branches, I just want to go back to the vegetation in front. For this, I added vermilion to the dirty brush that I already had. And this vermilion will add a slight glow to the vegetation from the sunlight. Now I'm going to move back to the branches and I'm painting on random branches using my liner brush to make the lines a bit more delicate and as I build on the branches I also want to use a thinner consistency of this color to paint finer branches so it doesn't look overly crowded and bulky. Next I'm going to use the same color mixture to paint on the leaves. As you can see I've divided this palette into different tones even though it's made out of the same mixture. On the left side it has more vermilion and the tone is a bit more reddish and I like to use this for the left side of the tree whereas on the right side I use the mixture with a bit more indigo to make the tone look a little bit darker. To paint on the leaves, I like to tap using the tip of my brush and I'm doing this fairly quickly while trying to randomize the angles and the shapes slightly. This way the tree will look a bit more organic. As you can see for the red part, I also used a lighter consistency. This way I can layer on a slightly thicker consistency and this will help create depth of the tree. For the darker color, I ended up switching to my liner brush here so I can create a different type of texture and I can also make the brush marks a little bit smaller. Once I'm quite happy with the tree, I'm going to paint on the reflection on the water. Before I paint it on, I actually dampen just the right side of the paper. So I'm using a wet on wet technique here and I use the same mixture as the tree but with added vermilion to create this muted red color and I'm trying to basically paint the same thing in an opposite direction but because I am painting on a wet surface the color will just blur out slightly making it look more like water reflection and while the surface is still damp but drying off slightly I like to build on the color so the reflection also has a bit of depth. I want to balance out the color of the water on the left hand side so I used vermilion with added crimson lake and mix it to the indigo mix to paint the top part of the water while still avoiding the yellow and the white areas. Next I'm going to paint the tree on the left hand side. For this I use the same mix of vermilion crimson lake and with the indigo that I already had on my palette. I'm going to use the exact same technique to paint the tree here but I'm going to make the shape differently. The overall silhouette of the tree on the right is more rounded and short whereas I want to make this one taller just like the reference image and I also want the height of this tree to be higher than the one on the right. Just like the previous tree, I want to use more of a reddish mixture with a slightly thinner consistency, especially for the areas closer to the sun. 
And after that, I'm also going to go back in with a slightly thicker consistency of the same mixture with maybe a little bit more indigo to make the tone a little bit darker. And just like before, I will layer it with my liner brush to create more depth to the tree. This is optional but I just wanted to add extra texture so I ended up painting on really thin branches for the land on the right hand side and also the left. I'm also going to paint on some loose leaves. I'm also going to paint the water reflection for this tree and the vegetation on the left hand side using the same color mix. The color might look a little bit different because the base color is slightly different to the one on the right hand side. For this one I didn't use a wet on wet effect because I still wasn't sure if I want this part of the water to be a little bit more still or not. I ended up adding some water texture which means that the water isn't still. So. In that case, it would actually work better to use a wet on wet technique to paint on the reflection. That's something to keep in mind for you guys, so if you want the water to look more still, I would make the reflection look a little bit more defined, whereas if you want the water to feel like it's moving slightly, I would use the wet on wet technique to make the reflection look more fluid. Next here I want the reflection to pop out, so I'm going to use Bleed Proof White to add on highlights to the brightest areas. My aim here is to create a nice white base so I can clean out the edges of the yellow area. And for the white, if it's too bright, you can use a clean damp brush to soften the color and take off the excess paint. Here I'm also clearing out the transition between the glowing reflection and the rest of the water. And I also want to make the reflection of the sun, which is this oval, to look like it's moving. So I'm going to add close zigzag lines to the top and the bottom of the oval. Here I'm painting on dots to give off a sparkly reflection to the water and I'm also going to apply it to the top part even though the reference image doesn't have sparkles at the top. After painting it on though, I felt like the white was too strong still and it's taking away from the sparkly oval. So I went over the white areas again using the color surrounding the water and to make the tone of the water darker at the top and slowly gradating to a lighter tone at the bottom. Then after that, once I've reduced the brightness, I would add on the sparkly texture near the oval. So I think I'm done here, but feel free to adjust your painting accordingly. I'm just going to unmask the sides to reveal the painting, and this is the completed scene. I feel like I still need a lot of work to paint watercolor sceneries, but I still had fun with this one. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use for this painting, as well as my social media links, will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!